So welcome back all of you to the next day session on this uh, fusion order management implementation. Nana here and then uh, we are continuing our activity and then uh, we are going to go and then jump into global order problem. So we will... Uh, sorry, let me move it now. So whenever you speak, what happens? You always have the habit of meeting, otherwise what happens? I had to force mute actually. So good. <clears throat> Now, we are going to begin our global order promising activity. <clears throat> so, let us go there and then we will now start our activity. Also. So, when, when you see the global order promising, <clears throat> when you have a look at the global order promising, so the first activity in uh, what happens in this, in EBIS now, fine, let us now go there. So, you go to the file <clears throat> and then what happens? Okay, you go to the edit. And then go to the preferences and then go to the profiles. Now, this is a personal profile there. I can go there. So I'll now go and then query this now. Fine, go there. MRT percentage. Default percentage. So percentage. Set percentage is the one. Fine, go there. I'll now query it. So set. Fine. It is MR, D, MRP default sourcing assignment set. Fine, control from We query it now. It will be pointing to the assignment set actually. So this is the assignment set. So we use this assignment set for ACP activities. For ASAP, and then here, what happens? We are going to use this assignment set for the global order promising also. So, ASAP is known as uh, what happens? Your ASAP is known as uh, uh, your uh, planning central actually. Here, yeah. ASAP is known as planning central, and then the global order promising also needs the assignment set. Close it now, and then we will go there. We will now go and then have a look at the assignment set actually. <clears throat> so, here I go to the purchasing <clears throat> supply base, and then go there. And then have a look at the assignments. <clears throat> so assign uh, what happens? Assign sourcing rules. The navigation now. Purchasing supply base assign sourcing rules. The navigation by double click on it now. And then here we'll now go for M1 all. And then let me query it now. Find that could to paste in the query now. So here you'll be finding plenty of assignments over here. There are plenty of assignments. So the assignments start from what? From the global level, and then what happens? It goes up to item level. There are plenty of assignments there. Find global level, and then item organization the topmost level actually. Global is a what happens a very much generic and then item organizations more specific. Say for example, I want to buy what happens a, a chair actually. A chair is a furniture actually. So I have a category based supplier actually. I have a category based supplier. Or otherwise, what happens? I have a generic supplier. This supplier supplies furnitures as well as what happens, he supplies hardware, and then he supplies the plastic materials, and then so many materials he is supplying. So yeah, I have supplier, what happens, S1. S1 is there, who is now supplying all the materials, he is also supplying furniture also. So what happens, what I will do is, I will now assign in Google. And then what happens, I have a yeah, chair supplier itself is there. A chair supplier is there, and let us say I am now sitting in Madras, and then what happens, I have this chair manufacturer who is in Delhi. So he is called S2 now. So I have an item level supplier S2 in Delhi. So that will be the second supplier. And what happens? I have another supplier of a chair who is manufacturing in Madras itself. So that is S3 now. So global, I have S1, and then item level, we have S2, and then in item organization level, we have S3. So there are three sources are there available. Now tell me, system will now pick up which one now? Anybody? S1 or S2 or S3 for sourcing actually? It will now pick up which one? S1 is a global one. So he is a generic supplier. He supplies all the materials, including what happens the furniture categories, furniture ones. And then I have a what happens a, a supplier, supplier S2, who supplies this furniture from Delhi actually. And then I have on the organization level, my organization is Madras. And then at Madras itself, what happens? A supplier S3 is there who is supplying sir. So tell me, system will now pick up which supplier for placing the order? Local supplier sir. S1, S2, S3. I want the number now. Three. S3. 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 Hundred percent correct. It will not pick up S3 because what happens, item organization is more specific and then this is more generic. If this is absent, then it will not pick up from item level. If this is also absent, it will not pick up from group. So that means what? The assignment set will now pick up only one valid entry and that too at the highest level. That is the highest level. So the highest level entry only will be picked. So what is here the category also, organization? If you have something, let us say I have one, some entry also there. So if this is absent, it will not pick up from here. If this is also, what happens? Whichever you are entering it, let us say out of one, two, three, four, five, you have entered three only. Global one, item level, and then item organization level, you have made three entries now. So if there are three entries, it will not pick up the top entry only for sourcing. And here also, what happens? It will not, if this is absent, then it will not jump. If you have category organization level, also one supplier. Let us say, let us say I have supplier at all the levels. S1, S2, S3, S4, S5. Let us say all the five entries I have made on the assignment set now. 
Now, what happens? S5 will be taken. If S5 is absent, it will not take up S4. And then similarly, if it is absent, it will not take up S3. Fine, likewise, it will not do. Is it clear? The concept is clear now. So this is the first step on the global order promising. Is there any doubt? Now itself, you are you're getting clarified. So on the assignment set, what happens? We have to do, you can now make any number of assignments actually. And it will now pick up only the topmost level first. Whichever, is, let us say I have global and then category only. So if you have a category organization level assignment, then that only will be used. If that is missing, then what happens? Being clear so So we are going to see this now. First of all, the assignment set. So the profile is what MRP default sourcing assignment set. Now fine. Now we'll now see the profile here. Fine. Go there. Okay. So let us now begin our activity on this now. Fine. On the GOP now. So I go there and then in this place, I will not go to my guest just now. <clears throat> so let me log in. And then here also what happens? We have a profile now. This is known as an admin profile. There it is a personal profile, user level profile. Here it is an admin profile. No, no, one second. Oh, what is GOP actually? Can you please? Um, GOP is a global order promising. It is a scheduling engine actually. GOP is basically a scheduling engine. It schedules the line. It is not going to say from which or we are going to ship it to the customer actually. Apart from that, what happens? It does some more things also. Not only scheduling, fine. It does all the back to back operations basically. Scheduling and back to back operations are being performed by GOP. So GOP is a scheduling engine plus the back to back operations are being performed only using GOP actually. It's a very powerful engine, and then we are going to see about how it's going to function. Okay. So I go there. What is it up and balance file? The first activity is what we have to see the assignment set. The profiling we have seen in EB is not fine. You go there, click on it now, and go there. I will not see the assignment set. Go there. So we have to go to the admin profile. Go there. It's a manage percentage. Admin percentage profile. So manage admin profile is the one. So manage administrative profile now. Manage administrative profile. So here, what happens? You go there. It's MRP percentage default percentage. You go there, and then you go and then query for it, search for it. MRP default. Click on search now. I'm searching for it. Manage administrative profiles now. Yes, and then you click on search now. So it's uh, why it's not uh, it must be MRP default. I will not say sourcing as we must have forgotten the full name of the profile actually. Yeah, it is so MOT default. No, not a one. Not the one. It is not a one. Sourcing assignment set now. I will not say. Percentage A S S I G N assignment. It's MSC sourcing assignment. Oh, MSC. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Okay. Is <laughs> assign. Is the MSC. Yeah, okay, okay. Is the MSC. This guy is from planning actually. He knows everything. He knows everything. MSC percentage assign percentage. Go there. Is the MSC. Yeah, it's correct. Right. So MSC SRC assignment. What happens? Catalog. Catalog for sourcing assignments. No, not this one. Okay. Hmm. Uh, Nana, can you search from uh, like MSP percentage? MSP, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Something like that. <laughs> MSP percentage. Yes. Yeah. Who is this? Naveen. Naveen, very good. Thank God. Is MSP good? Correct. Fine. Yeah. So Thank it's you. called MSP default assignment set. Fine. MSP default assignment set is the profile value. Fine. Hey, Naveen, you are already working on GOP or what? No, actually, I'm trying to uh, like explore in that that part. Okay, very good, very good, very good. <laughs> so this is one. So this will now point to an assignment set. Actually, fine. This will now point to an assignment set. Now, one second. Let me minimize it. This is now going to point to an assignment set, and then this is now pointing to my what? My gas assignment set. So in this only, what happens? Sir? We have to see all the assignments. It is MSP default assignment set. Okay, fine. This is what else? So MSP default assignment set. There it is. The MRP default sourcing assignment set in EBS. It is now here known as the MSP default assignment set. Okay, fine. So you know, we, have, we have to assign. We have to create one assignment set and then put it on this profile now. So what happens? The GOP is going to use only this assignment set. This is the first step. Clear on this now. Any doubts? Good. Fine. Here I have a doubt, Rajita. 
uh, actually in EPS we have to assign the uh, sourcing rule. Uh, it will be create work order or it will be create PO like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here also all these things are there. We are yet to come to the part. No? We have only seen. We have now compared that and then what I have shown you. Only this one I have shown you. So this is available as what? You go to the preferences and then go to the profiles here. Yeah, definitely go there. So it's what? It's the MRP percentage, default percentage, so percentage, set percentage point. Go there. So this is what is MRP default sourcing assignments and the one. So this points to an assignment set, and then in this assignment set only what happens? We will now do all the assignments actually. Up to this part is clear now, and here also what happens if you go on and see in this assignment set only we have to do all the assignments. Got enough and good. So no questions. You know, go ahead now. Right? This is it. So you know, I have to go to my gas assignments that I'm going to go. So whichever you're going to use it, you you put on this profile. Now. Whichever you're going to use it, you put on the profile. Okay, cancel. So it's not done. Fine. Now what happens? We go there and then we will now see this assignment. So click on this now. I will now go to the plan inputs. <clears throat> I will now go to the, this time. What happens? I'll be going to the order promising area now. I go to the order promising area. Tell now what happens? You used to do the collection. Fine. I go to the order promising area. In the order promising area, what happens? We go there and then see this. <clears throat> Click on it now. So this is called manage ATP rules. One second, one second. Uh, this is, is called one second. Uh, not this one. So manage assignment sets. Sorry, manage assignment sets. We go to the manage assignment sets now. Fine. I will now give a search. So you'll be having plenty of assignment sets now. Fine. Now what happens? The profile is pointing to this. Here you go there and then assign all your items. For the GOP activity, we have to assign only this. I'm going to click on edit. So here, what happens? All the assignments are being made. So the assignments, are, all the assignments are being made. And then go there. Click on cancel now. So in this assignment set only, we have to make everything. Remember, then only what happens? It will work. And then here, what happens? If we have, uh, uh, we will now come to the fine. We will cancel now. So this is the first activity. My assignment set is the one. And the place where you had to assign everything. All your actions as well. Now, here, if you go there and then click on what happens, manage ATP rules. There is a small difference when compared to this now. And here in the assignment set, what happens? We have multiple things which are assigned. If you go there, click on search now. Here there are multiple things which are assigned. If you click on edit now, you'll be having multiple assignments. One is an item level, one is an item org level. And there are multiple assignments of them. In EBIS, what happens is that if you drop down, so global is a generic one and then item organization is a more specific one. Fine. In EBIS, whichever is the highest only will be applied. And in the global order promising, it is not so. Whatever is applicable, it will all be applied. It's slightly complex, fine. Whenever you're getting any doubts, there. So in the I have item level one sourcing rule. And then what happens at the demand class something, and then something like that, and the item customer, and then and the item organization also. Everything is applicable here now. Whereas in EBIS, only the highest level is only applicable. Got it now? Right? <clears throat> now, we'll again come back to EBIS. So here, what happens in this assignment set, what happens, we have multiple assignments. Here, only one of them is applicable. Only one of them, is, the highest one is only applicable. So the same concept is also there. But in a different place, actually. The same concept is also there in a different place. Here, what happens? You go there. The same concept is there. You can answer now. So, in the assignment set, whatever you assign, everything is applicable now. You will cancel. And then here, if you go there, cancel it. <clears throat> you click on it now. And then here, if you go to the manage ATP roles, only one is applicable here. Now. If you click on search now, right? only one is applicable. Right? Only one is applicable. If you, you can have a particular item or a particular org may be available in many, multiple places, but only one with the highest one is only applicable. Fine, go there, click on edit now. And then let's say that what happens, you go to the ATP rule assignments now. Here, what happens? We have an item and then item org. Fine. So item org is more specific, right? If you go and then see item org, item org is basically more specific. Item is a lesser specific. Now. So what happens? It will not pick up this at all for assignment. It will only pick up this now. It will only pick up this. So on the ATP rule, the highest is only applicable. Whereas on the assignment sets, everything is applicable now. Just remember it now. Got it? So we go ahead now. So no questions on this now. Remember, in the ATP rule, highest is only applicable. Whereas on the assignment sets, all are applicable. 
So there is a deviation when compared to E based compared to Y. We can solve. Now, here what happens, you see, we have now created one infinite rule. We have now created one infinite rule. Fine, go there. Where is our infinite rule? D01. In the D01, I have created, fine, go there. I will now go and make a search of this one. So D01. Then click on search. <coughs> So I have created an infinite rule for two orgs basically. So items on all these orgs are eligible for sales order processing basically. And remember, every item must be available in one of the ATP rules. Every item as anything. Fine. Here, what happens is the infinite only, and then I have given the assigned to org level. Fine. If you give one thing as a global, you will give a plus now. Silent memory. So if you go there, I will not give a plus one. If you go down, if you make anything or the what happens at the item organization level is more specific, category is more generic. So if if I'm having an item, let us say item is basically a uh, what happens a computer item. So on the category level, on computers, I have assigned it to something, then it will work. Fine. Item itself will also work. Org level is also work. Item organization is more specific, and then this is more generic. So an item has to be on one of these areas. And the category level means what? You should assign computer. Item is item itself. Organization is what? Whichever organization is belonging to, you have to assign it. Otherwise, what happens? Item organization. So this way we can do that. And only the topmost level will be picked up and then not the other ones. If you go there and then query D01. So initially it will be likely somewhat confusing now. But you will know once when you start to work, you will be understanding. Go there. So in a D01, if you search for it, what happens? You can see what happens is the one. If you go on and edit it, fine, go there. I edit it. So here in the ATP rules, there are three things are there. One is what? Infinite availability. One is the lead time based, one is the supply chain availability search. Fine, there are three things in there. So infinite means what? We are bypassing GOP actually. Whatever you ask for, what happens? It will be basically given to. Me. So what happens? Infinite is normally used for non-GOP activities. You go there. And then in this place, what happens? You go to the ATP rule assignments. And then here, what happens? Both the orgs are installed. So any item which belongs to these two orgs will be basically, you can put a sales order. So if an item is assigned to only D0, D013 only, let us say, fine, D013 only, then that item cannot appear on the sales order at all. So can we override ATP at the sales order line level? No, there is no question of overriding the ATP. It is the eligibility criteria, first of all. Whether the item is uh, is orderable or not, that sort of eligibility, it is now going to perform. Fine. There is no question of already. There is no question of already. So an item has to be available on one of the ATP rules, remember. Either the org level or at the what happens, item level or the category level or item organization level. One of the levels it must be available. If an item is not available on any of the four levels, item cannot be processed on the sales order even for a non-GOP. <coughs> And non GOP implementation, what happens? We cannot toss. Clear on this now? Fine. So, till now, we have seen two things now on the GOP part. Click on the now. So, one is what? If you go there, we have seen about what? Manage ATP rules. The highest is only applicable. We have seen the manage assignment sets here. What happens? Everything is applicable. Clear on this now? Fine. So, I have already given what? An item on the ATP rule as such. On the ATP rule I have given. And other, in, 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 what happens in the org level I have given, not at the item level. So let us now create our first item for the GOP now. So here we are going to do the first activity on the GOP. <coughs> so I will now open up my version now. <coughs> so we are going to do our first activity. <coughs> <coughs> Back to back by. Uh, I have not given anything D0. I have not put a what was it? D030. I have not say B2B. <clears throat> I have not put an item. So I will not take copy to the first item. I have not put a small. I have a habit of putting a small one. We'll find D01. D0130. So let us now first of all create an item. This is going to be with a global order bonus. And before which, what happens on the other day, uh, Vijay has told about how to see the license, whether you are having it or not. We'll again go on an hour. So I will now click on this. I will now go to the setup and maintenance now. 
and you go to the setup and maintain this. And then here, oh, you go there. You, uh, you click on the actions, and then here, go to the offerings now. So the global order promising will be coming under this one now, right? Under the, what happens is supply chain planning. It comes under supply chain planning. And then here, you go to the opt-in futures now, right? You go to the opt-in futures. There, what happens, you'll be having an entry for global order promising. If you change, uh, if a person has not got the license, this line will be grayed out or what? Uh, that part I'm not sure, sir. I will second let you. I think if, if you are not having a license for global auto music, the entire line itself will be grayed out. You will not be able to even select or anything like that. It will be grayed out, yeah. I heard from one of my colleagues. Yeah. So if you have a license for GOP, what happens? This line will be enabled and then you can put a tick mark or not. So depending upon the requirement. That global, the global order promising icon will not come, sir. What itself will not, it will not come. Oh, that line itself will not come, you're saying? No? Yes, yeah. That line, the line, the line entry is Now, we will now go and then create an item. Now. In EBIS, when you go and then create an item for whatever is ACP, if I go there, go to the item inventory, you go to the items and then go to the master items. So when you're creating an item, if you go to the whatever is a GP region, now, you go to the GP region now. In the GP region, what happens if you see, <coughs> if, uh, oh, sorry, in the MRP region, MSMRP region, if you go there, if the planning method is not planned, what happens? It will not be collected at all. ACP will not collect this item at all. So the planning method must be one of the planning methods. Mm -hmm. MRP, MPS, APS. So now what happens? Everything has not come in the central planning center. So as of now, what happens? Only MRP planning and then MPS planning, they are only coming. They have only been implemented in uh, what happens in Fusion now. If you do the remaining ones, what happens? It will not work. I already tested. It is not getting collected at all. So item must have the MRP or MPS. MPS is only for production and then MRP is for what? Buy and make. All the buy and make can be done on MRP planning. And then for a, what happens, only make item has to be an MPS planning. So what happens, always have the habit of putting an MRP planning there. So that what happens, item at a later stage, if you want to make it also, you can very well make it. So MRP planning is the best one. The remaining planning methods have not yet come. Remember, high item attributes, if you do it, infusion, it is not yet working. Actually, I have already tested now. The remaining MRP, MPP, everything is not working at all. Only these two are working and that two, it's preferable to have MRP there. Let us now create an item with this one. So we are going to go on and create an item. So we are now going to create a GOP item now. Back to back this thing. So you go there, go to the product management, and then go to the product information management. So product management, product information management. And then here what happens? Go there and then click on create item. Now we are creating an item for GOP. So organization is what? My D01 and then my master will be coming automatically. I'll not put the root item class over now. And then let me give you okay. <clears throat> now let me take a copy of the item and then put it out there from the borders. You can have your own nomenclature, whichever way you want. No? I will now say D030. I will not put the item out. Paste it over here. Okay, no? Click on it. Then click on the description. Now, item attributes play a vital role as far as fusion is concerned. And so what happens, we have to give the appropriate attributes here. Go to the specifications. So here, what happens, you go to the manufacturing area. Right? In the manufacturing area, what happens, you go there and then go down. Here, <coughs> there is nothing. Uh, what happens, the specific for this is not fine. So there is nothing. And then uh, we'll not leave it as such. Well. Nothing to be done also. You go to the Yeah. Next is service is not required. Next is inventory. In the inventory, inventory items stockable and then transactable, everything must be on off. Right? Apart from that, there is nothing required for the GOP activity. The GOP activity is required. Now, what happens? You go to the what's called sales and order management. The physical attributes is also not required. Go there. Here, what happens? You go there. And then here, back to back enabled must be yes. Then GOP will come into picture. Back to back enabled is yes. Then go there. And then one more thing in the manufacturing, what happens? We have to make one more thing in the manufacturing. So here, what happens? You have to go there. And then here, make. Or buy is what happens to buy actually. Uh, where is that one? It is not in this place. Okay, it maybe will come in planning. Okay. So in the okay. management nothing is there. In the sales and order management tab region, what happens? You have to make was back to back enabled is yes. And then you go to the planning region. Find it on the planning. In the planning, what happens? Since it is a back to back buy, fine. Make it as a buy. So these two attributes make the item as a back to back buy. I'll tell you what. What exactly is a back to back buy? Let us say I am a uh, what happens? Uh, a retailer actually. I sell a lot of products with you. And then what happens? I normally do a catalog sale. <clears throat> Suddenly, if a mine, ha, person wants what happens is something, fine. Uh, let us say uh, he wants a laptop, a Dell laptop of uh, 17 inch and so on and so forth. I will now have a catalog and then I will now show it to him. He will now say it's okay. 
Now what happens? I will not buy from Dell itself, and then I will not give it to the customer. So another person comes and asks for desktop. Fine, he will not see my catalogs and then say, okay, I want this. So what happens? The desktop is now available with HP. So what happens? I will not buy from HP and then give it to him. So likewise, what happens? So this sort of a catalog selling, where what happens? We are going to buy from somebody, stock it in our place, and then ship it to the customer based upon his orders. So this is basically called a back-to-back -back buy. Any doubts on this? Not fine. So we are not going to make a back-to-back -back buy. So we will not buy from a supplier, and then afterwards, what happens? We are ship it to the customers. Right? Make a buy, and buy. And then here, what happens? Ensure that it is MRP plan. And then do not use any other plan. The MPP is not working. I have tested one, and then I have tested what happens? One more thing also out of this. No? Two, two things I have tested. When you run the collection, it is not collecting at all. Uh, when I ask them, they are saying that they are all coming. Is it to come now? Fine. So only MRP and then MPS are only thing which is available. Fine. MP, 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 MRP and MPS are only coming. So you choose the MRP plan. And the remaining are not applicable for this process. So we use the MRP plan. And then afterwards, since I'm going to interface it to purchasing, what happens? They always have a this price. I click on the purchasing and have this price. So some risk price is available. Whatever the market price, we have to put it on this one. So that's it. Fine. Item attributes are concerned. This is now ready for a, what happens a back to back. So in the main area, what happens? This back to back is yes, no. Back to back enable is yes. And then in the planning area, what happens? You are making it as a buy as well as. What happens is MRP plan. I know that. I will now go to the associations and let me associate with R. So D01, B2B, I will now say um, back to back buy it. So go to the back to back buy. D01301. So go there. Click on actions and then go to select and add now. So we're going to add it now. I know that is a D01 <coughs> one. And then let me add it on. Select and then click on apply and then click on done now. So by which whatever the item gets assigned with R. <clears throat> so go there. So D0130 is ready. Fine, go there. Connect. Seven close. Item is ready. Now let us now correct it to bring it to the what's called your area. Now. Fine. The, the, the planning area. Click on it. And then let us now perform the correction. So go there. And then let us now perform the correction. You go there. Go to this place now. <clears throat> Supply chain planning. And then go to the plan inputs now. And then here you click on it. And then here, what happens? We go to the collect plan, and then let me collect only the item because nothing else is not having any stock now. Such because we are going to buy, and then let us not collect the item. items and then bring it over. And before this, what happens? We have to make the purchase orders also. We have to make the purchase orders also. So let us go there, and then let us now make a blanket purchase agreement for this. So let us now make a blanket purchase agreement and go to the procurement, and then let us now make a blanket purchase agreement. And go to the what happens? Purchase agreements, and then let us now create a blanket purchase agreement. We now create a blanket purchase agreement. So click on create agreement now. <clears throat> so we'll be creating a blanket agree agreement for this now. And so what happens based upon this, the releases will be made automatically on this. It's a D01 is a supplier now. D01 is a supplier. I choose it. So sub one, I'm choosing it now. The side everything will be coming automatically. <coughs> So supply side, the supply contact, everything will be coming. Click on create now, and I'm making a blanket agreement. And then whenever you're creating an agreement, what happens, always have the habit of giving the start date. Agreement has to have a start date. Otherwise, what happens, it will not work properly at all. In EBIS, it gives a, it throws an error actually. So you, I have a habit of giving a start date. End date is also not mandatory, but start date is a mandatory. You give a date. And then what happens, the agreement amount limit, what happens, it has been enhanced when compared to EBIS. I will not give it 10,000. Agreement amount limit is not there. Only amount agreed is there. Agreed amount, amount limit is not there. Fine, that has been removed beautifully. And then if you want to have a release, if there is an enforced based supplier, you have to give it now. that notice. And then go there, click on plus and then let me add that. So D0130 is the item. So let me add that. Is that D0130 is the one thing you have to The item will be coming. So they will not be giving any quantity at all. In this but what happens? He is now giving a discount now. Fine, go there. Click on the edit account. Fine, we will not give a discount. Click on it. So he is saying that if you buy more than 10, I will now give you a 10% discount. And then here in the price break, I will not click on plus now. I'm not going to add it. And remember, discounts are location specific, and so what happens there? We have to give the location also. Fine, go there. So all this what it is a capital D 011, and then give it up. And then location specific fine, go there. is a D01, and then give it up. Lock one is the one of which what happens is going to give a discount. So discounts are always location specific in EBS also as well as in Fusion. So we are good. A lock one is coming. Fine, go there. So if you buy more, more than 10 quantities, what I'm just understanding was giving up and go there. And then I will not give a discount of what is it? 10%. So the price is three. What happens? You'll be enjoying a discount of around 10%. So I am a retailer. 
and then I am placing the purchase order on this place. If I am placing a purchase order for more than 10 quantities, I will now gain what I'm saying, a discount of 10%. That's it. And you can even have multiple discounts now. You give okay, okay, fine. So we are not given a discount now. And then what happens? You go there, go to the controls. You go to the controls now. So in the controls, what happens? This is going to be from what? From a, what's called uh, from a customer sales order. Actually. So what happens? You use this grouping. You put a tick mark on the customer sales orders. So then what happens? We are now going to get a customer sales order. From there, what happens? We are going to initiate a buy. Fine. Use the customer sales order for this now on the grouping area. That is it. What happens? You go and then submit it. So this is basically a multi-org access control of eBay. Now fine. It is almost similar to what the, what we have in now fine. What else? So click on save and then click on submit. By which what happens? The three thousand three agreement is now ready. So agreement is in place. And then if you submit for it, what happens? It will now go for approval and then it will be getting approved because what happens? I have already set only an automatic approval over there. So since it is automatic, what happens? It will be getting approved and then what happens? You will be able to see the 3003 will be open for anything. So it will be submitted for approval. Click on OK now. And then how? Look at it. I go to the manager agreements and then look at the 3003 now. <clears throat> These are all transactional systems. It has to be correct in the planning system basically. So agreement number is 3003. And then click on search now. And then search. And then remove the buyer name. Let me make a search. Sometimes the buyer, the buyer is here already. <clears throat> Go there. So 3003 is still pending approval. No point. It is now going in the approval process. Go there. Click on search. No point. <clears throat> hey, come on. It's taking a longer time. So if you click on the hyperlink, it will now say about who has to approve and then where exactly it is gone. No point. Click on the pending approval. And it tell you who and all it has been forwarded. I hope that what happens, one more team is also working here now. Fine, go there. So it's all done. Fine, go the application developer has approved and then it's got approved. The task is completed. Fine, all the tick marks are coming. And go there. That is what is. So it takes some time to what happens, uh, show it you. It's all done now. If you make a requery, what happens? It will now come as open. It's open. Mandichi. We got it. So this is one. And then afterwards, to make an automation, what happens? We have to go and then set up one of the what's called this thing. So you go there and then configure. Procurement business function is the one where what happens is we have to give a buyer. So click on it. <clears throat> and then go to the setup and maintenance. And then go there, click on search. Click on search. And then here, what happens? You go there. <clears throat> and then it's manage. This is configure. It's configure. Fine. Procurement business function. Do you say percentage and enter now? Fine. We are going to see this. Configure procurement business function. Go there. No. Go there. And then drop down and then choose maybe find the D01 BU. And go there. Click on OK. By which what happens? We have to enter the buyer. So the buyer has to be specified at one of the three places basically. One of the three places we have to specify it now. Or the, one of the three areas automation. Here, what happens? The buyer is already there. So that means what? The PR gets converted into a PO automatically if the buyer is there. As far as the agreement is there, fine, this is one. Otherwise, what happens in the item attribute itself? We can provide the buyer now. Fine. You have to provide it here, or otherwise, item attribute. Or what happens? We have a business rule which has come in release 13 actually. So Deepak on the other day told me I have never tested it actually. So using the business rules also, what happens? We can automate a PR interview. And there are three ways by which what happens? We can automate it. So the automation is now fully set. Now let us go on and connect it. Sir, if a customer didn't have the license for procurement, then how they will do this? It will be embedded and then give it to you. Fine. So, uh, for a back to back area, what happens? Uh, they will now include whatever is required for order management. Everything will be uh, uh, what happens, uh, clubbed together as a package and then give it to you. Say, for example, what happens? Uh, I'm now having a procurement license. Fine. But I don't have a human capital management license. But you will be allowed to create a job. You will be allowed to create a position. You will be allowed to create a department. And then you can also create an employment. Everything you can create through SCM. But what happens? You cannot give what happens a sanction a leave. We cannot promote an employee. Fine. The absence management cannot be done. Fine. The appraisals cannot be done. So HCM specific activities you cannot do. But what happens? There are so many generic things which has to be done by other modules. They will all be coming as a shared ones. Nana, could you please get into configure procurement business function one second? Okay. <clears throat> Go there. Click on search now. <clears throat> Configure procurement business. Go there. D01. Okay. Yeah. 
scroll a little down. So here, you know, <laughs> do you see this enforce supplier hold? Where is it? Uh, just below that, you are able to see auto generate orders from requested negotiated equation lines. One second. Group requisition. On the right hand side. Scroll down further. Yeah. Yeah. No, no. Auto generate so, orders from a request exactly. a negotiated requisition lines. Exactly. So this is one such functionality using which we can directly convert requisitions to purchase order. We do not need to write any approvals. No, or we do not no, approvals yeah. are required for what happens a purchase agreements no automation uh, no. Is an agreement you need an agreement uh, yeah maybe yeah so it, what happens if the buyer is not there only what happens an agreement is required and the buyer is required if buyer is absent it will not work and then uh, this may not be required from no one wants even if we don't no do it what happens it will work yeah in fact actually in one of our customer actually you know they wanted such a functionality like you know the moment my requisitions are approved i want the po automatically approved so using this function you know see it's not checked and then you can now see the pr will be converted to p1 i need only two things yeah. now because asl is not a not a requirement right? so many things have been uh, what happens removed from release 13 onwards now you have an agreement in place and then afterwards what happens you have the buyer in place that's it or otherwise, if a buyer is not in place, what happens? You use a business rule to what happens? Use multiple agreements and then source it from one of them. Yeah, this is what I'm trying to tell you. If at all we do not have you know BPA or CPA in place, no, that's not. No, if you don't have a BPA, we will not create a purchase order. How we can create a purchase order? That is the basic. Uh, no. Let us say. No, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Let us say I don't have any agreement at all. Fine. The item price, let us say, for the Nariel is one rupee some twenty years back. Now the Nariel, the coconut is now uh, available in the market at 20 rupees now. It is not at 1 rupee. So if the BPA is not there, if the system is going to convert the item price into a PO price directly, the supplier will not agree at all. So before you make a purchase order, what happens? The, the item, the price has to be negotiated. If the prices are not negotiated, the prices can be negotiated only on a BPA and no other piece. So if BPA is not there, even if you put a tick mark, the system will not create any PO at all. BPA is a mandatory one. So the BPA cannot work at all because there is no <coughs> negotiation. Bad from you can put it. If any any other thing has been introduced for negotiation, then we can use it. In release thirteen, I don't know whether whether they have introduced anything for negotiating the price. The price yeah, has yeah. to be negotiated with the supplier. If you have any such a, what happens a document for negotiating it, then what happens you can use it. Otherwise, as of now, what happens only BPA is the only place where we are negotiating. It. Even if you put a tick mark and then without a BPA try, it will not work at all. That is basic. So here what happens you know in the requisition page the moment someone creates a requisition we do have you know one hidden checkbox called negotiated yeah so yeah yeah, yeah. that's what it's like if you are putting the tick mark then means what this price is okay that is what exactly. is saying okay wait. that's what it, uh if uh, there that has been reduced then what happens if it is negotiated if they put a tick mark then it will it will now convert Maybe. yeah that's what i wanted to say very good very good and uh, Nas has told one excellent thing that what happens in uh, requisition itself, what happens, a negotiated tick mark is there. So that will take care of BPA. Everything. That's good. That means what even BPA is not required. Good, good, good. Because I have not, uh, I have not worked in uh, almost purchasing for almost one one year actually. <laughs> I don't know what are the, what happens, the new things just come now. And he's saying that there is a negotiated tick mark is there. If the negotiated tick mark is there, that means what? The requester himself is saying this price is a valid price. That's okay. Maybe along with that, if you put a tick mark on this, it may convert it. I think probably. Good, good, good observation. Huh? That's fine. If you cancel now. That's it. So go there. Now, what happens? We go there and then everything is in place now. Let us now do the connection. But we can't have no do the connection. We go there and then let us now connect. So go there, go to the supply chain planning and then go to the planning for snow plan. So, so likewise, what happens if you people know some any new advancements which has come in, in the releases, please let me know so that what happens, they'll now communicate to others also. So collect planning data and then it is now connected actually. So go there and then OPS and then go there. And then here, what happens? I'm not going to collect only items now. Items and then purchase orders actually. I know that items are not on these right? Item is a static one, and then go to the supply area and then I will not collect the purchase orders. And go there. I don't know. Purchase orders and requisitions. Uh, nothing else is there. No, 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 no
So purchase orders and uh, requisitions in the dynamic area, and then this on the static area. Anything else is required? Hey, come on. Have a look at it now and see. Any other thing is required? New links. Otherwise, if it doesn't come and then work, it will be very difficult now. It's fine, sir. It's fine. Uh, it's all working up. Huh? So item on this place and then uh, purchase requisitions and purchase orders on the site and go there, click on it and then no submit it. So click on submit and go to collect it. So this will be somewhat fast now. And then what happens is we can even go and then query on this place itself whether it has got collected or not. Is it D01? 30 is the one. Fine, go tab now. And then click on search. Fine. For me, what happens? Uh, uh, we have a catalog as a null now, but what happens uh, we have yesterday seen what happens when you go to even uh, some other thing also catalog is working actually in fusion actually in emission actually. So try to make an orange there's no fancy. So this has to come collected. So only when this collected, what happens is we can start our GOP activity. So the GOP activity can be started only after collection also. <clears throat> so go there and then and wait for the concurrence to complete now. So thank you, Das, for updating everybody that what happens is the requisition is having a negotiated tick mark. So just one, one point I need to add on add here. <coughs> So uh, the reason why I, why we are collecting is because uh, if we don't collect this item, then we will not be able to enter this item in sourcing rule, ATP rules, and assignments. In EBIS, it is not so. In EBIS, what happens is we can very well create the sourcing rule, assignment rules, and then after collection only, what happens is it comes to the planning area for what happens doing the planning activity. So Correct. Not that item has to be collected, and then only you can write the sourcing rule. No? <laughs> they should have implemented it in the same fashion. No, I don't understand this. This I feel idiotic actually. When I was attending this training in the headquarters of Oracle, I shouted on them, but nobody was listening to me at all. Oh God, this is a bad habit. This is what I told people. See, that is how it is implemented. That is what I simply tell them. Why they have done like that, nobody is there to what happens, give the explanation at all. So it's now running. So work out a delete staging rather than all and go there. In this place, what happens? You go on there. Can search now. Item is now available in the child dogs. Fine, you will now go there. The first activity is what? You go there and then you go to the manage ATP rules. You go to the order promising area. So the first activity is what? You go there. Go to the order promising area. So in the order promising area, you go there. Click on it now. <clears throat> and then you go to what happens? Manage ATP rules. You go to the ATP rules. Now, let me create a new ATP rule for this. I'm going to create a new ATP rule. So, there may be n number of ATP rules. Fine. Item must be available at least on one of them. Remember, item must be available on at least one of them. So, here what happens? My item is available on my this one now. Fine. If you go and then say search for it, up and go there. It is available on this D1. D01. D01 and then click on search. It's already available on this one because it belongs to one of the other. So it's available. <clears throat> now what happens? Let me create a new one. And if I click on plus one, fine. I will not go for what? I will not say D01. Not a score. GOP. I'm not creating one. And you can get n number of ADP rules. Doesn't matter. I go there. Click okay. And click on the plus one. And then for GOP to work, what happens? If you put an infinite availability, it will not work at all. Remember, it will not work at all. So GOP will work only when it is going to be a supply chain availability search or a lead time based one. Lead time based will be coming in manufacturing. The lithium base will be coming in manufacturing. So what happens is we are using the supply chain. Right? Supply chain and and here again, what happens? Is there are a lot of concepts on the planning area. Right? Now, it is basically uh, in, in the planning. So what you do is, since I don't know much, what happens uh, if uh, Vijay can uh, give a, what happens highlight on all these things will be excellent actually. He is already working on planning actually. I am now putting a tick mark on all. Right? I am now putting collecting everything on the supply side, right? including manufacturing actually. And go there. I am collecting everything <clears throat> because. Uh, in transit uh, supplies will be required for uh, what happens a uh, back-to-back transfer actually so this is why what happens i'm using it because all my items i'm going to put down this place fine go there click on the select and so when you're working on order management alone select everything now. if you're going to plan in the planning central what happens you have to selectively choose based upon so, and that you will be learning there and then here also what happens infinite available time frames you go there i will not say user defined one and then put a days of 100 days now there are so many concepts on this now. And then past demand due days, fine. Let's say are they 100. So what about the past due supply considered? Fine with that. So everything is going to be applicable only for the planning. And then what happens? You make a very high value. So that what happens? It will definitely what happens get collected actually. So you have to use either the supply chain availability search or a lead time based search for a GOP now. 
and go there and then click on the ATP rule assignments. Okay. Having done this now, fine. So learn from this thing. And then Vijay, I will now give you a session if you have any inputs on this part. No, fine. If you have any inputs on this part, otherwise it's okay. <coughs> if you have anything to tell the people what happens on this part now. If you have anything. So go to the ATP rule assignments and then here what happens? I go there. And then I will now assign. Fine. Click on plus. Click on plus, and then I will now choose the item organization the best one. Fine, go to the item organization the best one. Fine, go there. Item is what is the assigned organization is what D011, and then give it a tap, and then it is D0130, and then give it a tap. The item has to appear only when the planning is successful, it will be available. Okay, now, like given a tap, it's not coming. Fine, drop it down and then make a search. Now. Go there. D0130 is <clears throat> not visible at all. Fine, go there. Click on search now, and then I will now put this. Item starts with the D010, it's not available. Fine, so choose it and then click on it. And that's it. Fine, go there. What is so? Click on save and close. Now, this item is available on two of the ATP rules one on an infinite rule of D01 as well as one on the item organization level. Fine. Now, tell me which one is applicable for this item. Save and close. In the ATP rule, what happens? Only one is applicable, even though you have multiples. What happens if you go there and then make a search? Click on search. If you go and then search for this item, it's what I will know. Uh, D0130. <clears throat> so we have to choose this company. No, no, D0130. Click on search now. <clears throat> Click on search now. I have not choose this. Click on it. I'll take copy. And then if you give a search now. So here, at the, as an item level, what happens? It's available only in this place now. Right? The D01 GOP only is available. But at the org level, what happens? We have an infinite supply. Now tell me. Which one it will not use for balancing? It is called demand supply balancing. Fine. For the demand supply balancing, which one it is going to use? Now? If you go there and then see this now, fine. The D01, we have an infinite balancing. Thank you for search now. We are having an infinite balance. In this place, oh God, what happened? I have used the other one. Huh? D01 is not visible here. No? I used the B01 for this now. I don't know what exactly I've done. Now. It's a B01. And then make a search now. Sir, ascend to item. Oh, 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 that is the reason it's not coming. So, D01. <clears throat> and then click on search now. So, go there. It will know how, what happens in D01. You will have two such things. In the D01, you have. Know. So, we will have two such sourcing rules now, fine. ADP rules, basically. And then, what happens? Item may appear on multiple rules now. Fine. Only the highest level will be used now. You give a search. For all other items, it will now use the infinite supply, and then for the back to back item, it will now use the item org level, which is having a supply chain balancing and not an infinite supply. Is it clear now? Fine. So the first activity is now completed. Now, what happens? We have to go and then source it from a supplier, actually. We have to create a sourcing role for supplying from a sourcing role. Oh, God. Okay, it's now come. I don't know why it's now saying no results for now. You are done now. Okay, some some by some mistake. Fine, but well, there's again query. It has to be correct actually. D zero one and planet supply now. So ATP rule will now pick up only the highest level for doing a demand supply balancing. Oh God, there is a reason. Some, something has happened on this instance. So here, what I will go there. I will not put D01. I will not remove the item. And then click on search now. We have to have two such sourcing goals available here now. Is available. You can see. We have got one for the D01 organization. This is an infinite supply. And this is also infinite supply. It is an item or specific supply. Fine. Now tell me, these are all what happens if you go there. This is what? This is D01 and D02 are having what? Infinite supply. The other one is having what? The supply chain supply, supply chain balancing. One is the, this is in this place, what happened? This is now infinite balancing. Actually. If you go and see the infinite right here, fine. It is the infinite balancing. And then the other one is the supply chain balancing. It is not because it is infinite balancing and supply chain balancing is choosing, but because of the assignment area. Because of this, what happens? It's not big. Right here, what happens? We have what? At the org level, we have an assignment. Now, what happens? Item org is superior than org. Actually. So on the item level, item organization level is a superior than organization. So this only will be considered for the 
B B zero one three zero, it will not be considered. For all other items, the organization level will be considered. Whereas for the B zero one three zero, this level will be considered. Clear on this now? The item organization level will be considered because that is superior than this. So ATP rule will now pick up only the highest level actually. Now let us go and then create a sourcing rule. Click on cancel. So we are going to create a sourcing. Rule. So we will now go and then create a sourcing rule for this. Go there. Click on done now. Let us now go and then create a sourcing rule. Click on it now and go there. I will now go and then create a sourcing rule. <coughs> so go to this place. Manage sourcing rule. So go to the manage sourcing rules. The second act. The the, the the second activity. After having done the manage ATP rules, we go to the manage sourcing rules. Now. Very long create us two sourcing rules. One is what we are going to buy from a what happens a supplier actually. Fine, go there. Click on plus now. Fine, let us now create a what happens a your global sourcing. Fine, go there. We are now going to go global buy. Fine, go there. Notice D zero one <coughs> underscore global underscore buy. I am not going to make a global rule. It is not a local rule. Now. I will come to the local rule a bit later. Now, fine, go there. I will not take copy of it now. Go there. Click on it now. Go there. Go down and then here what happens? You give a date now. Fine, click on plus now. Then I am going to give a date now. <coughs> the date is given. Fine, click on plus now. Fine, click on this bottom one. Fine, click on plus now. And then here, what happens? The type is what? I am not going to what? T buy from and not transfer from. I will now go there. Go to the buy and then go to the, I am going to buy it now. Supplier is what? D01. And then give a tab now. So D01 sub one. I am going to give it now. Fine. So supplier side, I am going to make it now. Fine, go there. Click on it now. Click on it now. <clears throat> site one is coming. Fine, go there. So the sub uh, supplier side source system is what? OPS. Fine, drop it down and then choose the OPS. OPS is the one. Go there. And then allocation percentage is what 100 percent time go there. Drop it on. The system is now giving something. That is not required. Allocation percentage is mandatory. We, we don't give it, it will not come along. No OPS. Maybe okay, fine. I'm not sure about it. He's saying that OPS is not required. He's saying fine, doesn't matter. So go there. This is what us. <clears throat> we will have a small discussion on this a bit later. Now fine. The allocation percentage is back. So it is now done. Fine. A global sourcing is not. So I am now. If I am going to use this global buy, I will now buy from supply. This supply. I will go there. I will now buy from this. Supply. Click on it, and then I will now give a save. And then what happens? You give a save and close. D zero one global buy is now ready. Now I will now transfer it from D zero one to customer. Now fine. I will now create one more sourcing rule. Fine. Click on plus now. I am now going to make a transfer from there. Click on plus now. So I will make ready one more sourcing rule. So click on plus now. Fine. Go there. It's a D zero one. Fine. I will now say global. Uh, I will not say it is not global. I will not say transfer to customer. Transfer to customer. You know I mean? This is again a global one. Yeah, I am going to transfer to customer and go there. And then I will give a plus now. I will not give a date now. Now coming, fine. Go there. Click on plus now. Fine. Here I am going to transfer it to customer. Type down what happens. It is transfer from. So from the, this organization, I am going to put D011 and then give it a now. I'm going to transfer. So that's it. What happens? What else? Allocation percentage is 100, and then rank is one. So when I use this transfer from, I'll be transferring it to customer from the D011. Go there. So click on same and then close. So we have completed creating the sourcing rule for the back-to-back -back buy. Give a save and then come out of it now. Save and close. Now we go there, and then we go to the assign sourcing rules. I go there. It's called, it's called manage assignment sets. In EBIS, what happens? The highest level only will be considered. Now. Here, what happens? Everything will be considered. Fine. Everything will be considered. Fine. Go there. Manage assignment sets. There is a change here. Fine. Go and search now. And then the profile is now pointing to this assignment set. We had to assign only here. Now. Whichever the profile. Fine. The admin profile. We are now seeing MSP default as a sourcing set or something like that. Fine. That only had assigned. Fine. Go there. Select it and then click on edit. And now here, what happens? I'm going to make an assignment. So click on plus one. I'll be clicking on the So first one, it drop it down. <clears throat> so first one is what item organization. I will not choose the item organization now. Then go there. One second. I made a mistake. Okay, we cancel okay. because I have now modified something else. I go there. You click on edit now. I'm editing it. So once when you give a plus now, fine. You have to do on the top one now. Fine, give a plus now. Fine. Be very cautious in doing it now. Fine, that. It must be the top line on which what happens you have to do it, not the existing one now. Fine. So you can now see you can drag it and then see to it that you are in the top area in the top area and then click on it and then here what happens i now go there now coming to the top drop it down as an item organization so let me populate my item over here now paste it and then give it a 
So it's a D0130 and then give a tab. The item has to come up. The sourcing type is what? Sourcing load. And then let me put the item. Fine, put the sourcing load. Give a tab now. So here, what am I going So which one I had to do it now? I had to use the global buy. And click on OK. And then the organization I had mentioned it fine. There is a D011. So this means what? I will now buy from this supplier. The global sourcing, the global what happens a buy has got a supplier sub one now. So from there you supply it. You will ask him to supply to this org. You will now ask him to supply to this org. You will be supplying to this org. Now what happens from there? Once when he supplies from here, what happens? I am going to ship it to the customer. If I click on plus now, fine. I will now make one more thing. Click on plus. So here, what happens? We go there and then drop it down. Now I have an item organization level, and then now what happens? I am going to give item one. So tell me which one it will now pick now. Item org level, what happens? I'm now asking you to go and then buy it from a supplier. At the item level, I will now say transfer it to customer. So tell me which one it will now pick. The system will now pick which one. Either this one or this one. That is my question. Anybody? It is a test of how much you understood now. <laughs> I actually twisted the question actually. The question itself is a twisted, is not a the question itself is a wrong one now. I'm asking you whether it will now pick up from the item organization or item. The question itself is wrong. Can anyone tell me what is the answer for this now? Oh God, nobody is able to understand it now. I'm going to click on it now. It will pick both basically. Both of them will be enabled now. Both of them will be working actually. So D0130. And then I will now put this one. It is item level. Fine, but the org will not be absent. Fine, but the, what is the sourcing rule? This time what happens? I'm going to give what? My global sourcing, my global transfer. I will not choose the transfer. So the assignment is now completed. So it is now going to use both now. If I go there, click on what happens is save. Click on save. Now let us now view the sourcing hierarchy. How much now is now going to be? I've got two sourcing rules, two assignments on this now. Fine. Both of them will be executed now. So click on the view sourcing hierarchy now. Fine. I'm now given a save now. See? And then click on the view sourcing hierarchy. And then I'm going to see, see the sourcing hierarchy. Assignment set name fine, organization or item I will not put. And then D0130, and then you tap. I am not putting the item. I will not put the item over here now. And then let us know what happens. Make a search on this. <clears throat> Why one of them is search has to come up and give a tab now. Ah, it's not coming quite right, so. So I will not uh, put a date up today now. The search has to come now. He is, is asking everything. Oh God. Go there. Organization what D011. Click on search now. D011. Then click on search now. Select it and then click on okay. It's asking anything. Search is not coming. Assignment set is name not what? My guess one. Oh, then only search is coming. And if you go and then search it, will not say you from where and all it will go to say the sourcing hierarchy, it will not show. Thank click on search now. So once when you make a search, it will not show you the sourcing hierarchy. This is what it is. So we have what happens the item level sourcing rule, final orders, and then item organization level. So the lowermost one will be executed first, and then afterward the higher one will be executed. So we have a hierarchy like this now. We have a hierarchy from global to this one. So it will now first of all buy from this. Now this is the buying one. It will now buy from the supplier. And then afterwards it will now execute this. This is how the sourcing hierarchy works. Clear on this now, fine. So in the assignment set, if you are now made multiple assignments, everything will be implemented as the this now. Fine. The, what happens? The topmost one, and then afterwards, what happens? Gradually, the bottommost one becoming the global one is a generic one. So we had assigned it appropriately. So click on the now. Fine. Is it clear? Anybody has got any doubts on this now? The, how the sourcing hierarchy takes place first by and then afterwards transfer. Fine, transfer to the customer. Now click on the now. Fine. What is so we have completed all the activities of GOP now. So in GOP, what happens is we have got three activities now. I'll again tell you. One is what? In the manage ADP rules, what happens? If you want to use GOP, you have to have a supply chain balancing and not an infinite balancing. You can create n number of ADP rules, and then what happens? The item has to available, be available on a what happens a supply chain balancing. Maybe at item level or org level or whatever it is. At any level. But item must be part of that. So there must be one. Area where what happens, it has to be available. If it is not available anywhere, it will not be collected. And that too, what happens, not an infinite supply, either a lead time based or otherwise a supply chain uh, balancing list, the demand supply balancing. So the ATP rule is going to design the demand and supply balancing list. And there are multiple options are there, which will be explained in the planning central training actually, as far as order management is concerned. What happens here? 
Then at first, create all the sourcing rules for map. What happens? You're going to source the item actually. And then assign them into the manager assignment source. This completes the ATP setup for this item actually, for a back to back buy. Now, what happens? We go there and then collect the item. So we are now done something on this, this area. We are again collected. So click on what happens. Click on this one. You know, leaving this area doesn't matter. And then here, what happens? We go to the collect planning data. And then this time, what happens? We are not done on the orchestration area actually. So here, we have to only collect that part. Go there. So the what is go down. Order orchestration reference objects has to be collected. Nothing else is there. Either one just to be collected. Go there. Click on it. Nothing else is required. Click on it. And then go there. Click on something. So once when this is completed, what happens? We'll now go on then do the refresh and start. So go there and then have a look at it. We have to do a refresh and start. <clears throat> so the collection job set is running. So this many activities are prerequisite for this for a back to back. What happens? Buy. So there are three back to backs are available here. Back to back buy, and then next is what? Back to back transfer, and then next is back to back make actually. Or three things. Are So once when this concurrent is completed, what happens? We have to go and then run the refresh and start. So now what happens? Uh, we cannot start the activity now, and uh, you cannot start the sales order because now it's almost in the fag end. So what you do is I will now go and then create the next one called back to back transfer. And let me create the item message. I will now put what the D zero one three one. And I will now say uh, this is a B two B buy actually B two B underscore buy now. But here I go there. I'll say it's a B2B transfer. B2B underscore transfer. So tomorrow, what happens? We'll now run this sales order actually. So let us now create this item. We'll now go there. Let me go on and get the item. So now go to the summer area. Then what happens? Go there and then let us now go to this place and then let us now create an item. <clears throat> so go to the product management and then go to the product information management. And you click on it now and go there. And then I will now go with and create the item for the back to back transfer. Actually, we are going to transfer it from the other org. It's a D uh, 0 1 and then 0. Item is what? Root item. Class. So we are going to transfer it from the second org to first org. Actually, okay. Paste this item, you know, click on it. Description also, I'm wasting it. And then go down. And then you go to the specifications again. And then again, always have a look at everything. Now, whether go to the manufacturing, you know, and click on you know, anything to be set on this one, whether nothing is required on this one. Whether manufacturing, nothing is required. And remember, built in WIP is an important one. Built in WIP is an important one. And then so many back to backs will work only when the built in WIP is yes. Not. So, see to it that whatever the built in WIP is always yes. No. Fine. If you make a yes, no, some of the back to back operations will not happen at all, even though it is not there. It is the same thing in EBS also. In EBIS, what happens is whenever you make a back to back buy or a back to back make, the built in whip must be yes. So they have introduced the same concept now, right? So I forgot to tell you. So this must be yes for all the back to back, all the three back to back operations is a must now. I heard that one of them will not work. I'm not sure about which one is not working. So ensure that what happens always is yes, even though we are not building it actually. So this is on, go there. And then nothing else is required. And then afterwards, what happens? You go to the inventory, everything is okay, fine. Go to the sales and, sales and order management, and then make the back to back enabled as yes now. Yes. And then afterwards, whatever you go to the planning area. <clears throat> and then for both buy as well as transfer, it must be make buy now. For a buy as well as a transfer, the make or buy must be buy. Fine. For buy as well as internal transfer, also it's a buy one. And then go down and then ensure that what happens, we are having a MRP planning now and MRP planning is there. And then since we are not going to buy anything, what happens in the purchasing list price is not required. So it's okay, it's okay. And that's it. And go there, and then you go to the associations and let me associate with the child. What actions are then going to select and add now? So we go to associate with the child. It's a D011, and then enter in, then choose it, and click on apply, and then click on the now. And then go there. The item is not ready. And go there. So you go there, you go to the save and close by which what happens? The D0131 is not done. 
and this item must have what happens a sufficient stock in the what happens in the in the source organization so let us now go there and then keep a sufficient stock in the source now we go there take one so we now keep a sufficient stock in the source we go to the inventory management the source no, no, one, uh, yeah, Akbar here on small load. You know, if the item is a, a buy item, why we are enabling the built-in WIP? Yeah, it is the same concept in uh, here also. Right? When you are going to make a buy, what happens? Unless yeah. the built-in WIP is on, it will not work at all in EBIS. Do you know, you know that? Yeah, what happens? The item attributes. If the built-in WIP is not on, fine. The working process. If the built-in WIP is not on, the back-to-back -back buy will not work at all in EBIS. They have retained the same concept here. Also. So uh, I don't know the reason in EBIS. As well as I don't know the reason in fusion mass. <laughs> okay, fine. That is all it is. The built in whip must be on in EBS also for a back to back buy. And here also, what happens? Uh, it, is, it has to be enabled on for all the back to backs, basically. In EBS, we have only two things. What happens? Either you can buy or you can make. Can but make, transfer yes. has come in. I, I am not sure about whether the transfer has come in the latest version of EBS, basically. But here, what happens? It's all available. Might have income, fine. Back to back transfer also may be available in the latest version. Okay. It's got a different logic in EBS, not fine. Uh, and then here, logic has been changed. So, this question is a good question. I don't know this. Once again, I have to assign to the second order also. I have forgotten the number. Let me assign it to the second order. The item has to be assigned to both orders. So, you go there. And then I will now go to the manage items and then go to the software. D0, D0131. The D zero one three one the one thing that and then it has to be assigned to both the source and destination now. Click on it right now. And then launch to the first one of my last organization. Click on the master. Click on it. And then let me assign to the child orders. You go there. What is the what's called uh, associations? And then it can say to the child. You go to the actions. And then here what happens? You go to site map. So here it's a capital D zero one one. And then give it up. And then click on enter. It's already assigned now. Oh, sorry, zero one two. Sorry, <laughs> the second hour had assigned. Click on it, click on apply, and then click on the number. So the item is assigned to both the child dogs now. Because it is now going to be moved from one two to one one now. One two to one one, and I'm going to move it now. So click on it and then save and close. It is not done. Fine, go there. Let us now have sufficient stock on the source organization. The source organization number right now. Click on inventory. The source organization is the second order for this. Now, fine, go there. Click on it. I will now make a create miscellaneous transaction and then let me create the term. It's a D012 and then you tap now. Click on it. So the source organization is 012. Fine, go there. What is coming? I don't know how it has come automatically. Fine, go there. Yeah. And then you tap. This is the source. We are going to move it from 012 to 011 now. Fine, go there. Account 10 iPhone, 100 iPhone, 1000 now. Fine, go there. Pick up plus one. Item is D0131, and then give a tab. <coughs> Sub inventory is what? I will not keep it on the FGS now. The FGS is the one. And then keep some coin different. Jing, 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 jing. And we have sufficient quantities in the source now. And click on submit. Now, what happens? On the source organization, we have to set up the shipping parameters. Now go there, and then we will not do this. We have to set up the shipping parameters. We have to set up a maintenance. So first of all, we go there and then you go to this place, <coughs> go to search and then you know, set up the shipping parameters here, right? or the manage shipping parameters, manage percentage, ship percentage, para percentage. So we're going to ship it from the second hour to the first hour. Right? Click on so click on the manage shipping parameters and then you are already on the organization and go there and then uh, what happens, everything comes up for you know, I think I made up, we have done it already, right? that's why it's all coming as right? staging submitted is also there now. Right? So this is only grouping is required only for uh, what happens your release management actually fine not required as a scope. We can even put so, what is, so one doubt. So what is the difference between manage transit time and this this window manage shipping parameters? They are different basically. Manage transit time is going to say how much of time we're going to take from the number two to number one now. And then this is going to do all the shipping activities as such. They don't have any reference at all. That is something different. <laughs> So it's already okay. done now, so nothing to do on this now. Managing parameters, and then afterwards, what happens? We have to what happens? Do the organization manage interop parameters? Fine. Manage percentage, inter percentage, org percentage, para percentage. Fine. Manage interop parameters. So go to the manage interop organization parameters. Fine. Let us now query on this now. Fine. From organizations, what 
the capital D zero one two and then whatever the move the two organizations capital D zero one one and then make a search whether we have done it or not. We haven't done it. Find whether click on it and then we know edit it and then see if find whether good the actions. How edit it down and then it must be transfer order enabled must be there. Then only what happens? You can do it. Otherwise, what happens? Without a transfer order, you can do. So from the source organization of one two to one one, the transfer order must be enabled. Fine, we have set it. So we have set this now. So this is also set now. So the interlocation transit times also must be set now. Fine, otherwise it will not work. Go there. Go there. Go there. Manage. I will not say uh, carrier. So we should create a carrier. Actually, fine. Go to the carriers and then see whether we create any carrier or not. So it's a D zero one, and then make a query on this now. Fine. So the carrier the carrier actually actually can search now. So the carrier will be there. Whether the carrier is already there. If you go and click on it now, it will say the shipping method everything will be there. So you can be having a greater relevance for what happens your Oracle transportation management where what happens we can even have multiple modes of transport between two locations. It may be rail, it may be road, it may be ship. Fine. And then the OTM will now see the cost-effective means of transportation based upon the scheduled ship date actually. Fine. That is a big model actually. Fine. Many people are now asking for it. I I don't know that, and then uh, everybody is asking me, "Sir, please please learn it, and then teach us now." <laughs> I don't have that much of patience, but again, right? OTM is uh, now a hot topic actually, transportation. So take a cancel one point. Done. And then afterwards, we we'll now go on and see the manage transit times now. Find that. So manage transit times. Then enter now. So manage transit times. Click on it. So go there, and then what happens? The origin type is what it's all internal actually. Origin is what D zero one underscore lock underscore two actually. Right? And the lock two and go there. What is it? Not coming. Right? Origin constant. Ah, uh, you click on it. Origin. You click on more now. Location name actually. Not coming. D zero one underscore lock underscore one. Destination is not not coming. As a I will now see on this now. Type is what internal location now. Well, after putting it on it, it will come out. Okay. <clears throat> Go there. D zero one underscore lock underscore and then give it tap as showing all the locations now. Now it's showing. Okay. D zero one. So if you put an internal, then only it will come now. So go there. Lock one. I'm putting it now. So not lock one actually. Lock two actually. Okay. Lock two. So the origin is lock two. And go there. Click on search. We'll now see whether any transit time has been defined from lock two to lock one or not. No, it is already there. So from lock two to uh, what happens? Origin description, and then is the destination description. So from lock two to lock one, we already defined, and then we have a carrier also, and then what happens? We are now given the in transit time as one day. Actually. So lock two to lock one, you know that. So the transit time is also defined actually. We already done this. So the carriers, the transit times, and then the interop parameters as well as the shipping parameters must be properly defined before you initiate a interop transfer. Now, fine, back to back transfers if you initiate what happens? And then there is no necessary for us to set up any suppliers. Now, fine, go there. We can now directly go and collect it actually. So, the fact and what happens, I will now run the collection actually. So, now we are ready for two items. Now, fine. So, uh, I will now do the collection also. So, go to the collection also. So, go to the supply chain planning and then go to the plan inputs and then let me collect it now. I have already collected for the other one. And go there. Click on collect it. Collect planning data. <coughs> and then go there. Click on it. This collection is a really a horrible one. And then uh, what Dasar is saying, you know, na, they have got a lot of changes in the inventory happening on a daily basis. So they perform collections even multiple times on every day. And then since they have a huge number of items, it takes around two hours for them to collect. So very horrible. Now we go there, item is there, item I have to collect now. And then what else I have to collect now? We have done the shipping methods. Okay, shipping method I have to collect now. Yeah, shipping methods. And then what else to collect here? Come on, this day is a planning day actually. When you have a doubt, what happens? You collect everything now. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> no, I don't know. That. It will take a lot of time. Yeah, exactly. So this is this is enough. What I don't so, uh, on and uh, go to supply planning data. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll come to that. In this one, static data, anything else is there? Submit what is all already? We already collected those things from. Ah, uh, you go there. Go to this place now. Click on it now. In this place, what happens? You bring the on and on. Only on and not fine, nothing else. No purchase requisitions, no purchase orders actually for this one. No transfer orders, fine. Transfer orders are not there at all. Fine, brother. If there's a transfer order, fine. This is enough. This is sufficient, nah? fine, brother. So Vijay is a king on this now. Thank you for So that's it. Sir, not much, sir. <laughs>
<laughs> so the second item is also what happens uh, collected actually and then afterwards tomorrow what, what you're going to do is we will now make the atp rule and then we will now make the sourcing rule as well as the assignments actually the three activities of the water form is we will now do it for that one is what what the atp rule in this place after collection only we will come and we'll record it now. so after collection only we will be able to do it otherwise one of the atp rule we are doing and then all the sourcing rules we had created and then assign the, all the sourcing rules created as well as the assignments assignment sets and afterwards again one more collection only for the order orchestration order orchestration activity we had done now the next activity is what we have to run the refresh and start for the first item actually so that i will be doing it uh, after this class actually and so that what happens uh, tomorrow morning uh, tomorrow evening we will now directly go on and create a sales order for the back to back buy so any doubts it is a very tough topic actually and it is even more complex i am not only telling you the basics of it now right? you go through the implementation guide it will not tell you lots of uh, permutations combinations which you can use on the what happens on your uh, what's called sourcing rules as well as assignments etc plenty of uh, permutations combinations are there so you go through this and then once you succeed on the first basic one afterwards what happens you can even start to understand about how the other things will go to work actually. so we have kick started our activity on the global order promising any questions nana rajita here tell me ya in back to back order in ebs uh, we have to required uh, sourcing um, blanket purchase agreement ah uh, see it all depends so fine if you don't put the blanket purchase agreement what happens it now create only a requisition now if there is there in the place if the adc automatic documentation is there what happens it will make a purchase here also what happens the most similar thing it will only create a requisition and then it is not there it will not afterwards we have to manually uh, make a purchase order uh, nana you created the blanket purchase agreement just to avoid the uh, purchase order creation step right just yeah. automatically create it exactly it will automatically create. you can try without creating a bpa and then see uh-huh. and then uh, the das was saying na uh, if uh, the negotiated tick mark is there there is no need to create a bp at all right? it's a good input actually aha uh-huh, yes yeah, position yeah. what happens if you do it so i don't know in this automation but our our request will be the system generator request and it cannot be a view in the request on screen right so how we can make it is a negotiated or not yeah, yeah it's a good question probably it may even pick up automatically i think <laughs> the tick mark the negotiated tick mark will be picking up in the system so maybe what happens is the bpa itself may not be required fine if the prices are okay for you if the items price is okay for you no need to have a bpa okay. it may even pick up the tick mark of the requisition uh, what happens is negotiated automatically and then one more setup i have forgotten of fine that no otherwise i'll forget it again so here what happens is go there go to the uh, order management parameters on more setup i have forgotten manage order management parameters manage switch akbar is a guy who is working on this asap and other activities fine and then vijay is working on the planning center of this now so you can even contact these two guys they will be of more helpful to you in the field whenever you are getting started. sorry nan i am not working in the acp <laughs> actually i am working in the uh, supply chain and in the manufacturing of okay. the ebs it's not a good idea on this one like so here one more thing is what manage order management parameters the preparer for procurement must be there otherwise it will not work so for your business unit what happens we have to put the preparer so prepare, there is a, a person who is going to make all the purchase orders and i think my like preparer means what is a purchase order preparer actually he must be a what happens a legal employee and then he must be a what happens a procurement agent also so this is also this is another setup which is required for us and then apart from that what happens if you see back to back fine uh, i have told you already on this now fine whether i will again repeat that now fine so we have seen now fine we have already told you the back to back order on the setup part uh one second here order management setup now fine uh we go down the manager on computer parking the customer says yeah here what happens on the procurement area fine go there so this must be enabled so that what happens it will be basically enabling the fine customer says order fulfillment must be enabled now and i'll show it to you fine there so you go there and you have a look at it on the one <clears throat> so here on this place you go there and then you keep it the procurement of and was so on the procurement if some procurement actions change features now this is for the actions and then you go to the change features selection now in this place 
have a look at it now. This place, uh, supply chain financial orchestration for procurement must be on now. And then uh, and the customer sales order fulfillment must be on. Now. These two things will be on. So then only the back-to-back -back activities will be working as well as the dropship activity also. Will be working. So the dropship also must be in place. And then this is on the procurement right, for the change feature selection. So I've only given one now basically, but again, what happens? The other one also must be on the final. I've only given mistake. Way. The supply chain financial orchestration for procurement. If it is going to be across BUs, this financial orchestration is for the across BUs now. Fine. Uh, I hope that uh, Deepak, fine, the other Deepak, not Deepak C. The other Deepak is an expert on this now. I hope so. And then uh, I, I have already given you a document, but since I couldn't understand it, what happened? I'm not done. But we have done one basic setup now. I will now show you one more. One basic setup we have done now. So that also. So this is on the procurement side. Fine, click on it. And then afterwards, what happens? We have on the on the order management side also. What happens? We are doing. We drop it down on the order management side also. Go there. And then here, go to actions and then go to change features selection now. Whenever you are interfacing to purchasing, what happens on the procurement side, those two tick marks must be there. And in the order management, what happens, you have to have that dropship enabled. Even though I'm not doing the dropship, what happens, this is on the procurement interfaces basically. And then there is one more required, one more setup required, thank God that this is what is called, uh, what's called, what is this step? One minute. Manage this one. Manage dropship financial flow for a dropship actually. This is also required for dropship actually. Whether you do with the GOP or without GOP, this is a must. Even if it is going to be on the same BU also, what happens here right now? If it is across BU, there are plenty of setups there from a financial perspective for accounting. So just to keep a note of all these things, whatever I am telling you, what happens, you keep a note of it because uh, you may not be, what happens, if you skip any of the setups on this one, what happens, you'll be landing into problems. You'll not be able to find out something is not working. And then uh, uh, how, what happens for each and every activity, you can even make a checkpoint basically. Find what are the things you have to make a check on it. And then accordingly, what happens? You do it in a systematic manner. People made mistakes, and then what happens? I correct everything. <clears throat> so once you do, don't do, do the shipping set department. There's all the errors are coming. So I simulate all the errors and then find. So so much of the things have been taught now. Fine, you have to what happens? Have your documentation ready clearly. One uh, what happens? A flow documentation you have to make. Otherwise, uh, you will be finding it difficult in the field actually. Anita, is it interesting? She's already implemented it. Fine, she's there. Anita has implemented, and then uh, Sindhil has implemented, and then uh, on look uh, on uh, what happens when Vignesh is start, just started implementing it now. The, the difference between uh, creating a sales order, I mean, oh, that? promising a sales order. Can you hear me, sir? No, just I'm hearing. Okay, the voice was breaking actually. Tell me. Okay, sir. So, so the difference between promising a sales order with GOP and without GOP. Yeah. So in, in the case of with uh, without GOP, so we must need on and right? Of course, not here also we need on and now. Without on and how you can give it now. On the paper, if you write and then give it him, he will not accept it now. Cheapo, you will not say. You have to ship the product actually. Fine, on and is a must in both the cases actually. Okay, so in, in real life scenario, so most of the time, uh, if, you, if you ask any customer, if they don't have any stock, then how, how they will book it? They will book it. They can book it, but they cannot ship it. That is very, as simple as such. In eBay's also, what happens is that if you don't have a stock, you can very well book the order. You will now give a false promise. Sir, tomorrow we will definitely give you. And now what happens is tomorrow somebody else will not talk to the customer, sir. You don't have any stock. Either. They will not say that there is no stock. So there is a, what happens, a delay in production and then by evening we will not give you. By evening, what happens, somebody else will not say tomorrow morning we will not give you. Sir, likewise, what happens, you will not keep on telling lies. <laughs> so, okay, the, system will the system will automatically populate the promised date or how is it? That's what I'm saying. In what, what they have done in Fusion is what? The reservation has been made mandatory for the default due. On the do, what right. happens? The default, what happens? The reservation is mandatory. If you don't have any stock, it will never even progress at all. So if you have a customized yeah. do, on what happens? The bypassing a reservation, it will now progress and then it will now uh, interface it to shipping. Okay, so that is why we have GOP now. So if you have GOP, no, no, it's based on. This purpose is a different one now. Fine. We will come to the GOP purpose a bit later now. Fine, brother. We will come to the GOP. First of all, what happens it is, is a fundamentally is a scheduling engine actually, but it does a lot. GOP is a very powerful one. We'll now see the GOP's future a bit later. Now. GOP is a very powerful one. That is why what happens the Oracle is now trying to sell it as a separate license actually. You have it, you'll now have what happens wonders with it. That's what they say. 
But again, this is not wrong. When you are going for a sales order, why you are doing a GOV as a separate license just for money's sake, man? <laughs> These customers, if they keep on shouting, they don't know what happens. Oracle will raise. So they see in first implementation, what happens? The pricing and advanced pricing was having a very minimal feature. Then what happens? The customer shouted like anything. And then uh, you, because what happens? Uh, our uh, company was uh, recommending uh, CPU. They forced. They were forced to buy the CPU because what happens? Uh, so many even discounts were not possible in release eleven actually. The simple basic pricing is only working. So they bought the CPQ and then what happens? They did the every pricing and then the interface. But they were always shouting on Oracle. So at that time onwards, what happened? They realized that what happened? They had to make the pricing engine powerful. And then now it's much more powerful. And then they brought many, many things on the algorithm. Algorithm is a really tough one for a what happens? A normal implementer actually. So he has to have the ADF knowledge, Java knowledge, etc., etc. And then he must know about how the language flows are there. Otherwise, what happens? He'll not be able to touch the algorithm. That is another issue. They have to solve it out and then make it simple actually. They will be doing it. Already, what happens? When I had a talk with them, they, they are having another product. Again, they are all bringing new, new product and then interfacing it to what happens? The, uh, the fusion. Any other doubts? Yeah, right. right now, uh, order promising is inside supply chain planning. So, in the future release, it will be moved to order management. Oh, oh, oh. Under the branching of order management. Oh, oh, oh. GOP will be moved into order management. Huh? Yes, yes. This guy is in the development actually. Good. <clears throat> That's fine, fine. We'll now call it a day and then we'll now continue our first activity of B2B by tomorrow. I will be running the corrections now. Fine. Refreshes start, I'll now run it now. As well as I have to run the corrections also for the first item actually. So there are so many prerequisites are there. Fine. What happens? Uh, list down all the prerequisites before you set up a back to back basically. Otherwise, you'll be landing up in a problem. Bye for now. We'll not meet tomorrow. Okay. Thank you, Nana. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you. Good night, sir. Bye. Good night. Bye, Nana. Bye. Thank you. Bye.